The Arctic P12 Slim has a lot to live up to, sharing the same name as one of, if not the best price performance fan on the planet. But can it? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Before getting onto the overview, to have full disclosure, I did buy this fan myself to test and review, so all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button, and if you really like the video, how about subscribe? I'm sorry, but YouTube does force me to say that in every video. I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons for supporting the channel. Thank you very much. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a link to the Patreon page down in the description. Okay, let's take a quick look at Arctic's P12 lineup. And there are quite a few fans in this lineup, so it's best not to get them confused with one another. There is the P12, which has a 3-pin fan connector and a max rated RPM of 1800. There is the P12 TC, which has a 3-pin fan connector and a max rated RPM of 1800. The TC stands for temperature control, so it has a temperature control lead coming off of the fan and the RPM goes up and down based off the temperature within the case. There is the P12 Silent, which has a 3-pin fan connector, but has a max rated RPM of only 1050. There is the P12 Slim PWM PST, which has a 4-pin connector and a max rated RPM of 2100. This fan does have the built-in fan splitter and a 15 millimeter profile. There is the P12 PWM, which has a 4-pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 1800. There is the P12 PWM PST, which again has a 4-pin fan connector, a max rated RPM of 1800, and again, because it is the PST, it does have the built-in fan splitter. There is the P12 PWM PST ARGB, which has a 4-pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 2000, a built-in fan splitter, and ARGB LEDs. There is the P12 PWM PST CO. So this has a dual ball bearing bearing, a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 1800, and it does have the built-in fan splitter. Finally, there is the P12 Max. This has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 3300. Okay, so in this video, we will be going over the Arctic P12 Slim PWM PST. So as I just said, it does have a max rated RPM of 2100. This does actually have a zero dB mode, so the minimum RPM is zero. The minimum operating RPM is supposed to be around 200. There are seven blades. Again, it is a slim fan, so it has the 15 millimeter depth or profile. It is a fluid dynamic bearing, along with the standard six year Arctic warranty. Now, before I get onto the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear that this is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance you'll get, but it should give you a pretty good understanding of what to expect from these fans. Okay, starting with the PWM range. So with this fan hooked up to my motherboard and the PWM of the motherboard set to 100% for that fan header, this fan is showing an RPM of 2230-ish. Then at 50% PWM, this fan has an RPM of 1350-ish. Then at 0% PWM, this fan stops, so the RPM is zero. The fan kicked on at 10% PWM. Now the motherboard isn't actually showing the RPM here, but I took out my tachometer and the RPM is about 190-ish. So this fan does have a really good RPM range. That's it for the PWM range. Now, before I move on to my standardized testing, if you are appreciating all the testing that I've done here, could you please support the channel by using my Amazon Associates links that are in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location, and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. It is a great way to support the channel without actually shelling out any money directly to the channel. And if you do have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video where I go over the how and what of my fan testing. There'll be a card along the top and I will also have it linked down in the description. But please note, I have updated the cooler that I use for the CPU cooling performance to the Frost Commander 140. This way I can test 140 and 120 millimeter fans on the same cooler. So it's a little bit more apples to apples on that. 
As always, starting off with the DBA and RPM. So at four volts, I measured the DBA of this fan at 32.2, and that had an RPM of 850. At six volts, the DBA was at 32.5, while the RPM went up to 1275. At eight volts, I measured the sound level at 33.6 DBA, and the RPM at 1630. At 10 volts, I measured the sound level at 35.2 dBA and the RPM at 1950. Finally, at 12 volts, the dBA went up to 37.4 and that had the RPM at 2210. Okay, now for the sound recordings at each voltage, but first the ambient room sound for your reference. The airflow testing is next. As usual, I left up the DBA numbers on the chart for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, this fan had an FPM of 55. With the meshed panel, it had an FPM of 35. And with the cover panel, it had an FPM of zero. Jumping up to 12 volts to save a little bit of time here. With no obstructions, the FPM was at 280. With the mesh panel, the FPM was at 250 and with the cover panel the FPM was only 100. Moving on to CPU cooling performance. At 4 volts the average steady state temperature was 86.8. At 6 volts it was 83.1. At 8 volts it was 79.1. At 10 volts it was 78.6. And at 12 volts it was 77.8. Okay, I will be comparing the P12 Slim PWM PST to the Arctic P12 PWM PST, the Inwin AM120S, and the Thermalrite C12015BS PWM. So when comparing the P12 Slim to these other fans, we see that it's not quite as loud as the non-Arctic fans at the higher voltages. Moving on to airflow, so when voltage equalized and with no obstructions, the P12 Slim moves far less air at 8, 10, and 12 volts than these other fans do. With the mesh panel, things look pretty much the same. There's a small drop across all the fans, but no real change in the rankings of the fans here. It all kind of looks much the same. In the cover panel testing, there is a large FPM drop across all the fans. However, the standard P12 does handle this far better than the other fans do, primarily because it is a standard thickness fan that's optimized for static pressure. The AM120S is now pretty much matching the P12 Slim, although the C12015 is still moving more air. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. So with the fans voltage equalized and with the chart zoomed in, the P12 Slim is the worst performing fan here. Now, yes, the AM120S and the C12015 perform better than the standard P12 PWM PST does, but you do need to remember that the P12 is a fair bit quieter than these other two fans for only a one Celsius temperature difference. So there is that. On to the 34 dBA charts. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if they don't actually get up to 34 dBA. So with no obstructions, the P12 Slim had an FPM of only 205. That has it tied for second lowest FPM with the Shadow Wings 2. Now the Shadow Wings 2 is at 12 volts and only 32.2 dBA. So that is a very large noise to performance gap there. Even though it is moving the same amount of air, the Be Quiet Shadow Wings fan is a fair bit quieter. With the mesh panel, the P12 Slim is again near the bottom of the chart with an FPM of 175. Then with the covered panel, the P12 Slim had an FPM of only 55, which, yeah, isn't good. So what do I think of the Arctic P12 Slim PWM PST? 
Now, typically you should only use slim profile fans if you're, there's not enough actual space or clearance for a standard fan. Meaning if you can use a standard fan, don't use a small, a slim profile fan, period. However, when comparing the P12 Slim with other slim profile fans, it's not good. Actually, it borderlines on bad. You definitely don't want to put this behind a covered panel. It just does not perform well there whatsoever, even though it has the P acronym, which is supposed to be for pressure. This fan does not have any static pressure or very minimal static pressure. And as you saw, the other slim profile fans that I've tested do perform better than this does with a mesh panel. So yeah, the only real thing I see the P12 slim may have over the other slim profile fans that I've tested is that it has that built in fan splitter. So if you are short on fan headers in your system or on your motherboard, it can definitely help with that. And that it has the Arctic six year warranty. But besides that, I really don't see a point in buying this fan in my opinion and i guess i will leave it at that because yeah th th this was pretty disappointing so if you did end up liking this video or you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up and if you're still watching and you haven't already please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever i drop a new video there is the hfg discord server it is completely free to join and i drop my uh, charts for my case testing my cpu coolers and my fan testing all on the Discord server so everyone can kind of see it and get the most up-to-date stuff there. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. And again, thank you to my patrons for supporting me directly. You may want to check out this video here. I guess it's on this side. Uh, it will likely be along the same lines as this. It'll probably be another fan video. And of course, as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.